Many writers are paralyzed by the thought that they are competing with everybody else who is trying to write and presumably doing it better. Forget the competition and go at your own pace. Your only contest is with yourself. William Zinser. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. Today we are going to be talking about editing your short story. And I think this stage, more than any else, is the time where you need to be competing with yourself, your past writing, the former version of this story that you've created. Ignore the competition that you're going to submit for it ignore the other people and focus on making this story better. When I was looking up different articles from different industry experts to share their wisdom on how to write and how to win a writing contest, I cannot think of a single one that did not include, please, for the love of God, edit that short story. As judges, as people who are experts in the writing contest field, Every single one of them wanted to scream at people going, edit it. This is not something to just write and throw away. You should be putting your best foot forward. So we're devoting an entire episode to that exact concept. Please edit your short story. Just because it's short doesn't mean it doesn't need editing. Trust us. If you have time, we suggest you rewrite it. Write a version in the morning, write one at noon, write one at night. Don't use the other one as reference. Write the same story in different ways because each time you're going to improve. The pure act of repetition forces your creative side to do things differently, to rephrase something in a more interesting way. It's really difficult to do this with a full-length novel, but especially if you are looking to win these competitions, rewriting can be a huge help because you can take these pieces and put it together into something that people will love to read. And then once you've written those couple of different versions, you can decide which elements from each one you like best. You can combine them, you can mix them up to make the best story possible. Sometimes, especially if you were given a prompt that everybody else is following, Your first instinct is going to be similar to everyone else's first instinct. Writing and rewriting will help you make it unique to you. And that is a huge part of polishing that short story, making it unique to you. You as an author are the only one who can write certain things certain ways. If you try to feel like everybody else, because this is what everybody else is doing, you lose that uniqueness. The first step in making it unique to you, the first bit of advice we have to make sure it's unique to you, is to add dimension to it with the words you choose. This is an opportunity for you to go through and pick more precise words. Sometimes that will mean a longer word. You can change sad to morose, but you need to pick the right words for the moment that can help your story stand out. So as you're editing, check for those adjectives and those adverbs, those words that are describing something else in the sentence, and then see if there's a better way to phrase that. You might have to include the something else. So instead of said vehemently, she shouted. Doesn't have to be necessarily a more complex word, but a more accurate word. And make sure that you keep your style. Hold on to it. Don't try to fit your writing into what you think the judges will prefer or what the contest would accept. Make sure you are representing your style because that's how you want to win is by being yourself. If you're anything like me, the rhythm of paragraphing is a huge signature in my writing style. So if I negate that in hopes of winning this contest, it's not a contest I should want to win anyway, because it's not who I am as an author. And it's going to fall flat because it's insincere. When you're writing and editing your short story, you also need to take a look at your cast of characters. It is a short story. It needs to be a very small cast of involved characters. Your main character should be unique and possibly your villain if you have a villain present in the story. 
the rest of the characters should be mostly stereotypes. Maybe with one or two different variations, but really not that much because if everyone is complex, you don't have enough time to show that depth. It can make all of the rest of the cast feel homogenous, and it can make this story very difficult to follow if you're going into the backstory of every villain minion that the character is seeing right now. Give the dude a scar, and he's a bad guy. Because that's kind of what we expect, and that way we can identify him and move on. You can have interesting details about these other characters, but they should be easy for readers to immediately understand and wrap their minds around. They may be complex in your mind, but on the page, they need to be simple and easy to digest. And the biggest part about editing that short story often comes to minimizing that word count. Especially experienced writers, the short part of a short story can be very difficult because you want to explore the depth of this and that in the world that you're creating. You're used to having 100,000 words to tell your story. If you've got 3,000 words, you need to minimize that word count as much as possible. I feel this is really an important thing to remember if you are having any sort of world building elements, any sort of magic element, anything unique that needs to be described. It can be really hard to fit all of that in, in a way that you think is understandable for the reader. But you have to remember that you don't need to have a detailed explanation of anything. You need to present it in a way that makes it feel natural for the world, that that is just how things are, and the readers are far more likely to accept it. When it comes to minimizing that word count, redundancy is your enemy. It's very easy, especially in a longer novel, because that's not going to be read all in one sitting, to place little reminders what this character's motivations are, or what this character looks like, or how this one piece of technology works. These reminders are part of who you are as a full-length novelist, so cutting those out, because the whole thing's being read in one sitting, fingers crossed, can help you reduce that word count and bring it back under control. Redundancy with your words is also something you need to look out for. Look at those adjectives and adverbs and make sure you're not saying he's smiling happily, because that is a redundancy that is just eating your word count. And you can use those words in other places in better ways. Another way to minimize that word count, especially if you have a lot of words that you're trying to cut, is to start later and end earlier. So cut off the first and last page. See if that helps your story get to the action faster and leave the reader wanting more. You don't really need to spend a lot of time on scene setting or any details that the reader doesn't need to know. They can just be implied. I recently got feedback on the short story that is going to be in an anthology. And one of the things that I had included halfway through the story was just a quick little detail that the character was a tiefling sort of creature. She had horns and had violet skin. And I thought that was just a fun little addition to the story. And the feedback from the editors was I had to suddenly change my entire view on this character halfway through and it's not really relevant. So remove this detail. And I'm like, oh, that's actually a really good point. If they picture her as human, it doesn't matter. That detail of the story is completely irrelevant for the rest of the story. So it can just be gone. And that's the sort of thing that you can look to remove are details that you might think are interesting, but have no bearing on the story itself. And of course, like the old adage says, leave them wanting more. Cutting the end, especially, can feel like you're not putting a nice little bow on it. It's not a satisfying ending. So somewhere between where that satisfaction happens and the bow at the end, that's where your cut should be. So leave them satisfied, but leave the world open for opportunity. And that is the good sweet spot. Something that can help you decide whether to cut entire paragraphs or entire parts is to remove it maybe put it in a different document, and see how it reads with those moments cut out. If it makes it easier to digest, if it makes it better, then go ahead and leave it out. 
It's easy to make things complex, especially if you're used to writing or reading full-length novels. Short stories is the time to boil it down, make it as simple as possible. And of course, putting your best foot forward means you're getting feedback from everyone around you as well. This means your writing club should have some say, at least get their eyes on it, hand it out to your beta readers, especially if you have that crew already built for your full-length novels. Spend time on getting their feedback can be huge in understanding how the judges will also be reading your story. Spend as much time on editing as you do on writing it, at least as much time. You really need to spend the mental energy putting together the story before writing it down. And I know I'm not one to say that because I am really a pantser when I write short stories, but that's why I go through two, three, four, five different editing phases of short stories, of rewriting it, because you need to spend that time to make it better. While it may have started as a selfish process, if you are doing it for the goal of submitting it to a writing contest, in the end, you're editing it for someone else's approval. And you do need to remember that. We started off this episode by saying, please edit your short stories before submitting them. We're ending it exactly the same way. You want to put your best foot forward in order to give yourself the best opportunity for winning this contest. That does not mean you spam a whole bunch of people with mediocre stories in hopes of winning something. That means you take the time, you edit your story, and you only submit something if you write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 